so there's a few things that you should know before starting your first AIMS network design model. Once you have finished going through your configuration wizard in Data Navigator, you will be able to download a blank Excel template like the one you're seeing right now. The first thing you will notice is that there's a notes uh, sheet. Here it's an overview of all of the columns you're going to have throughout the sheet and the description of each of the attributes. So you have an idea of what information you have to input. Then you have uh, a few different colors, if you notice, for the different um, sheets. So they're grouped basically in light orange. So here is the basic information of your network, the number of DCs, number of production facilities, average speed you're going to use. Um, then we have the blue sheets where you can define uh, your different products, groupings of products, the different units of measurements if you have them, and the, their equivalencies. The next group we have is the green sheets. As you can see, they're all related to your location data. So here you can put all of the information of the grouping of your locations and the geographical uh, latitude and longitude of each one of them. Uh, that is followed by these yellow sheets that are all related to supplier information. We have the bill of materials, the bill of resources. And then we have uh, the customer sheets, which are all these orange ones. So here you're going to be able to define the customer information, the grouping of the customers, the demand data, if they're single sourced or not, um, the lead time and all of this. Then we move on to the gray sheets, which are all related to your resources. That means your distribution centers or warehouses and your production facilities. And here you're going to be able to input all of the information regarding capacities, costs, uh, different uh, custom objectives or custom costs that you have added. And then the last group is the purple sheets that are all related to your transport uh, data. So here you're going to put the transport information, the different lanes, if they are available or not. Um, you can also, according to what you have said in your configuration, have rate cards. You can have also transport trip data. So all of this is depending on the, the configuration you have decided on. So once you know a bit of an overview of how your Excel sheet works, let's take a look a little bit of some of the tips that you should uh, have in mind when you start this. So first of all, here in single valley data, uh, this sheet, you can write um, all of the information from minimum DCs, maximum DCs, uh, average speed, all of this will be available in your network design app on the model control. So this is the table where, where you will enforce or relax different constraints to run the scenario. So this is the default information that will open up in your network design. Uh, now, if you have selected an option in the configuration that generates a new sheet or new columns like I've showed you, uh, um, it's important to know that it's okay to leave it blank. For example, here I have some um, blank data from latitude and longitude from a few of the customers, and that is okay. It's not, it's not a problem. It's okay if you've decided that you don't need it anymore. And then uh, adding on to that, if you leave it blank, um, it's as if you had a zero. For example, when you put um, information as minimum capacity, if you left it blank, it corresponds to a zero to the app. So it just uh, ignores it. Um, another important thing that you should look into is this description that you have on the right hand side of most of the sheets, where you will see exactly what um, each of the columns mean and how to populate it. So here, for example, um, you have the, you can read that it says the minimum supply of this supplier by product. So it's gonna explain you a little bit of how each uh, column should be populated. And you have that for uh, most of the sheets. 
another thing that is very important is that the app will not recognize formulas. So if you have to uh, do some sort of calculation to get a value, for example, of the capacity, you should either add a new sheet, like I've done in this case. So I've added a new sheet with some pivot data, or uh, do it all together in a different uh, Excel sheet, or if you really need it in the same sheet, you should put it on the side. So you should not put the formulas under any column. So you should just put it here on the side, uh, and then it will not uh, recognize it at all. Then adding on to that, if you're gonna put information on the side of your sheets, make sure you don't write it on the first row, because in the first row, the app will read uh, the columns as input, and it will recognize that there's something different that it shouldn't that it shouldn't have there. Um, now we have a lot of sheets that are called, for example, location relation, customer relation, uh, resource relation, and these are all uh, related to grouping. So it, everything that has relation is going to help you to create different types of grouping. So again, um, there is also no restriction on creating any groups. So you can create as many groups as you want and with as many levels as you need. So you can have groups within groups and this can be done with the periods, locations, customers, resources, and um, they, for instance, can belong to more than more than one group. Um, something that is very nice to know is that these groupings will allow you to run different scenarios in the app because you will be able to select them as a group as opposed to clicking on one by one. So we should be able in the app to see LDC and just select all of the LDCs instead of clicking on every single one of these 29 LDCs in this case. Um, also, if you have selected the option of allowing grouping in, in your configuration, you will be able to refer to the name of the group that you have created. So in this case, for example, I can refer to LDC or to CDC, and then I can assign a, an attribute data point to everything in that group. So for example, um, I can, I have grouped this uh, DCs, and then I can see that I've used the groupings in my transport cost data. So instead of writing one by one, I've just included those groups here. And that can be done throughout the template and this will help you save some time. Um, another important thing is uh, that we're probably not used to is in the product definition. So here you are able to define the each product, but uh, you have to remember that every element you put here um, is treated as an SKU if it has a demand. So not necessarily this um, monocrystalline solar panels are an SKU, which means it's not the lowest um, unit, the lowest echelon in our hierarchy of products, but uh, that's the one I'm gonna use as my final product. So hence it's why I put a one in this SKU. And uh, because I want to uh, group them as solar panels, and that is not an SKU, it's just a group, I will put a one in its union. So every time you want to group something in the product uh, definition, you will put an is union, and then you will be able to, uh, in the product relation, like I mentioned before, to add the different products that belong to that group. Um, so now we want to see what uh, all of these um, suppliers mean. So basically, you have to remember that. Um, in the network design app, you always need product to come from somewhere. So you either have a production facility or a supplier. So for example, if you're only wanting to um, model your DCs and what's going on there, you can just create a dummy supplier 
because there needs to be some product um, coming from somewhere. Then uh, another important thing that you have to uh, remember is that the single sourcing means that 100% of the products from one specific need to come from one specific source, whether it is from a supplier or a resource. So we have the option of do is doing single sourcing for customers and for resources, but what it means is that all of the products that arrive um, to that location come from the same place. Lead time in the customer product data or drop size customer product data refers to the last drive time between your resource and your customer. So it is basically the time it takes to complete the last mile, and it does not consider the times in the rest of your network. There's also an option of having different resources in one location. So if this is not the case and every uh, resource has the a, a different location, then it is okay or it is recommended even that the resource is named the same as the location. So for instance, here, most of my DCs have a specific location, but here I have two resources that belong to one location. So that's only if you have that specific case. Otherwise, it's easier to just um, do them as the independent uh, locations. Uh, in transport cost data, in transport cost data, you will write the available lanes in your network. So remember, like I showed you here, the from location and to location can be product groups, um, as well as the periods. In this case, I also have a period group, which is 2022. So just to remember that, as well as the products, which are also groups. Again, this is going to save you some time and some um, lines that you have to write of data. Also, as you see here, there can be a combination of different costs for one lane. So this will just be uh, added to the last or to the final cost. So here we have a cost per distance and a cost per THU. And those two will be, will be added to calculate your final transportation cost. Another important thing is if you have uh, created duplicate lanes to allow for future scenarios and uh, that you want to test, then you must switch on the exclude transport, transport flag by writing a one. This can also be switched on direct, directly in the app as you run um, a scenario. So those are a few um, tips that you should know before you start your first AIMS network design model.